Welcome to the Market Mystics Podcast. I'm Joshua. I'm Kim. Let's dive in. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, you guys, today we have a returning guest. He's no stranger to the Market Mystics. However, we haven't had him on for a while, probably, I don't know, a year and a half or so. Um, But we are really excited to have this guest on. Uh, We get to talk about some things that are near and dear to our hearts, um, some of the things we do together, and some of the things that are really stirring up in another part of the world from where we are. Yeah, many of you probably have heard us talk about our involvement in programs in South Africa. And have maybe like, if you haven't listened to all of the interviews with Francois, you probably are like, I don't quite understand it. You guys are from Kansas. What's going on there? How did you get involved in that? Um, What are you doing now with it? Um, And I think today you're going to get kind of an idea of like, what is going on over there? Why we're excited about it? And um and what maybe you can do to put some eyeballs on it as well. Um, so, Francois, welcome back to the Market Mystics. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, I don't know actually how long it's been. Um, it's been a while, but then again, I normally don't know what week of the month it is. Um, yeah. So, uh, so we just we roll with it like it was yesterday. Very true. I actually looked up. Uh, before we started the last time you were on, it was May 20th of 2022. So it's been a while and your debut on our show, I think you might've been our first guest. I think probably it was on, we called it Tuesday. Cause it was two 22, 22 or oh. two 22, 2022. Yeah. Um, and that was the first time we got to have you on. So it has been a while, but I'm glad to have you back. Well, you guys have grown quite a bit. Um, since I've been on. And so it's a massive privilege to be a part mm-hmm. of your journey and seeing you guys grow. So yeah, thanks for having me. Let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, Eden Protocol in general, like big picture, tell us what it's about. And then let's talk about some of the projects that you're currently working on. So we want to start off with big picture. Yeah. Okay, so for those that don't know what Eden Protocol does and are really not into reading like I am, um, (laughs) so don't go to our website, don't read about what we are about, listen to what I'm telling you. Um, (laughs) So Eden Protocol, the the, the whole team concept is built around the fact that um, all of the team have grown up um, committing their lives to community work, um, really actively making a change, um, but found that we lack... Um, in really making that change last. So sustainable um, growth, sustainable solutions. And all of the team are um, professionals by career. And just because of our hearts and our calling um, being the same and the amazing relationship that we forged over the years, and I can tell you, I will gladly give my life um, for any of these guys, and I know they will do the same. So it's a really special um, group of people and by no means are they um, rubber-necked or um, have got no spine. It's a it's a lot of individuals with a lot of um, chili in them. Um, so <laughs> they're spicy. Um, so we butt heads, but it's good because it's it's pioneers. Um, it's people that really stand for what they understand. Um, and so we banded together saying, listen, let's start supporting quality other nonprofits. And so we do, in effect, um, I don't want to use the word audit, but we we really do our homework with who are we going to partner with. Um, because when we get involved, we we get involved. I, I always joke, say that we've got commitment issues. When we get stuck in with you, you're not getting rid of us. Um, <laughs> but it's with good intent. And so uh, the point um, for us is um, is that we, we want to help the guys who are really passionate, um, who've got incredible relationships with the community and have got a good concept in sense of the um, nonprofit that they're running, but they lack in professional skill sets. Now we're talking about um, the financial side of it, the um, law side of it, 
even just marketing because most of these guys run on um, fundraising and that is a marketing model all day, every day. And so that's just on a business side. So most of them don't understand the language that business people talk and that they are focused on when you invest, you want to see return um, on investment. And how do you measure return on investment in community projects? That's a, a massive question that needs to be answered. And I can tell you now that for every nonprofit, that looks completely different. And so the metric system needs to be designed specifically for that community and nonprofit. And that's where we come in. Um, I come from an engineering um, background and I ran um, operations in um, power generation for a long time. So um, metrics, uh, measuring systems, efficiency, um, all of that, that's basically how, how I function. And so it's, it's very strategic. And so that's where I come into the game. And then that's just the business side. So now we've got funding in, we've got metrics, the business people can see where the investment is going and whether or not it's growing to their satisfaction. Then we've got the community side and we need to talk their language and help them understand that the expectations they have with funding that comes in is met in a reasonable manner. Um, because sometimes guys have just got um, unreasonable expectations to be honest. And so you need to take people on a journey where you don't create an environment of entitlement, but where you breed an environment where people take co-responsibility. Um, they start um, activating themselves in, in um, taking ownership on all of that. And so it is a, it's, a, it's a complicated model if you start pulling it apart. But in actual fact, it's just family and it's just community and it's just the kingdom all in a nutshell through and through and you work with various levels of skill sets maturity understanding languages cultural backgrounds it is just you know um, it's herding cats most days and mm -hmm. everybody loves cats because we see all of the cute cat videos but man um, to be a shepherd of those guys you need to have thick skin <laughs> and a lot of patience um, and that's why it needs to be a passion. Um, you need to wake up every morning, not, uh, you know, hating your life. Um, and so that's why we partner with people that already have that passion. And then we lift, help them lift the standard. And so that's the big picture. Um, we want to, um, we always, um, our slogan in, in essence is, um, love is a verb, your action restores hope. So it's about taking action. Um, because I'm a firm believer that your divinity is activated only when, once you take responsibility. Mm. Um, and so it is really about activating people to start taking responsibility and not play their blame game because we can play the blame game on an economic level. We can play it on an environmental impact level, on a political level. The world is just, you know, saturated with all of the, the historic problems that we have and we can blame the previous generation or, um, powers to be, but really, if you um, look at the biblical concept of it, um, and I'm, I don't want to be abstract, but the second Adam came in, and he not one time put um, a finger um, in a backwards direction, saying it's because of. It's not because of the first Adam. It wasn't because of the Sadducees or Pharisees. He just said these are the problems. Let's take responsibility. And let's take ownership of this. And how are we going to bring problems, um, solutions to these problems? And so by no means are we saying don't um, complain. But if you complain, the rule is that you need to come with some form of solution or even just an idea or just a starting point. So by all means, complain, get it off your chest. But then you know if you, if you complain, you're going to have to take ownership. Um, so there's a trade there. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that in essence, um, is, is the big picture, um, to, for, for the Eden protocol is to work with quality nonprofits to, to reach the end goal of, and what we would say is we call it the 3.5% rule or the remnant rule. And so there's a case study, um, uh, where they looked at, um, what it, required in terms of population size and strategy to overthrow a government to start a new government. And sometimes it was dictatorship turned de um, democratic. Um, and so what they saw was uh, there were two lines of thought. Uh, the one line being um, 
that you take a very aggressive um, approach and you buy violent force, republic war basically, um, you take ownership of the state. The problem with that is you destroy all your infrastructure, your economy, people die, and it's mostly the guys who are the breadwinners, the skill sets, all of them, they are wiped out. And then you need to start over. And so it's actually, you 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 don't uh, take over governance, you actually just wipe out and start over. Um, and that for me is not a, an approach that works because you never solved the problem that was there in the first place. It was just by annihilation. And so they found that that was one way that worked, but the other way was a nonviolent approach and it was 50% more effective than the violent one um, because you've got infrastructure, all your people there and all of that. Now, what is a nonviolent approach? It is building parallel infrastructure, economic models, all of that, um, bringing solutions to the current problem of the state that is um, in control and allowing people to be invited and naturally gravitate over to the new ship. So leaving the sinking ship and going over to the new one by means of making it um, attractive. And so that worked. And then they, they just looked at what was the population size that was required to do that. Um, and they found that it was only 3.5% of a population that was needed to effectively establish a new government and to overthrow the old one. And that is a, and that's why it's called the remnant rule because it's such a tiny amount of people that need to do it. So if you've got a school of a thousand people, um, your class size is normally about 30 people. It's basically a class. One class changes a whole school. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you take um, the, the nation of South Africa, it takes one of our provinces or states to be more than 3.5% of that. South Africa is more than 3.5% of the continent of Africa. And so if we are consistently driving this thing, bringing sustainable solutions focused around community and quality relationships, uh, in the next couple of generations, we can really have a completely different world uh, where, man, we've, we've got uh, a generation where hope is actually restored. Long story to just give you a big picture. So, uh... <laughs> no, I like it. I, I like what you were saying about um, Yeshua as well. And you didn't ever find him looking backwards and pointing fingers. And I think that's really, really an important thing about what we're wanting to do with Eden Protocol is this is where are we going and how do we build the way right? This isn't about yeah. blaming anything. This isn't about um, reminiscing on the past too much. We don't want to build on the mistakes of the people who came before us. We want to build a solid foundation to move forward. Yeah. And I think that's a really, really important principle. And I think this is kingdom. Like, <laughs> If you have listened to us for any time at all, I hope you know that we are for kingdom, but Eden Protocol came together and honestly, the origins of how the three of us got connected, this was before Market Mystics came together. This was before the podcast and this was all built upon kingdom. This is all about, it's coming out of relationship, not only with the Lord and with one another, but it's also coming from a heart for humanity and a heart to see communities built and thriving. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's really kind of where we're coming from. And I, I suppose, I don't know why I feel like I need to hammer this home, but apparently I do, but that's really where we are in this. This is kingdom. Yeah. Um, and this isn't forced kingdom. This is just like you said, building that parallel infrastructure. And it is getting people on board with this, seeing that there is a different way and then allowing the bridge to be built so that people can come over to a new system. People can come into the new infrastructure that serves them better, that leads us in a direction for a better future and doesn't just hang on to a past that hasn't served us. Yeah. Yeah. Francois, like shifting gears just a slight bit, do you want to tell us about like uh, 
what what's going on now and what are you guys like what's what is Eden protocol involved in now like before we started recording you and I were having this conversation about how uh I was just talking with Kim's husband and we were like going through the Eden protocol social media and being like man they're busy they're doing this they're doing this they're doing this and you're getting some engagement and interaction and so do you just want to share with some with the people like what what's on the what is like the primary focus at the moment what are you guys busy with so um if you go on our social media pages you will see what we are um, busy with in terms of marketing but in order to market you have to have um, something that you want to introduce into the community and i'm purposefully um, avoiding the word sell because we're not selling anything um we are because the the focus of eden protocol is to provide sustainable solutions to communities uh when we started in the Mossel bay area which is located um, in the western cape south africa uh, we it's it's one of the best run municipal areas in our nation um mm -hmm. it, we've got a um, a semi-migration um, effect in South Africa, for those who know, don't know what the word means, because that's a, a, a phrase we coined here. It's <laughs> our infrastructure in our nation is falling apart in the north. Um, and the Western Cape is governed very well by a certain political um, group of people. And so it is the only um, state that is really kind of just functioning normally with all of the junk that's happening in our nation. And so we are seeing people basically vacating um, the northern provinces of our nation and just moving into the Western Cape now. So Marcel Bay is the number one town and the town next door, which is, which is Grootbrak, um, you will hear that name quite often in our social media videos because we cycle there. It's the number five destination um, in terms of uh, popularity where people are moving to. So this area is a number one and a five. Um and there was really no reason for them to govern it that well because it's actually a holiday destination for the last, uh, say, two to three decades. But they did. Um, it was just the way they do business. Um, and now it's become this economic hub and we are seeing money, expertise, just absolutely flocking to this area. Now, um, that's why we are here because it's the perfect incubation space because we don't have to look at infrastructure in terms of water sanitation, um, roads, all of that, because the, the governing um, stewards, those who steward, steward the infrastructure, and it's important that we understand that because the community is the governing body. Those who sit in political power are actually the stewards of the infrastructure, and they are supposed to write and um, govern the bylaws according to the needs of the community, but the community went slack. And so that's a, a separate rabbit hole we can jump down on, a, on a, <laughs> another conversation. But I, I mentioned this for a specific reason. So the people um, that are governing you understand that. They are also business owners, the guys who sit in, um, in uh, municipal positions. And so they are continuously asking businesses in the community to step up. And so because of that approach, it's become this absolute incredible environment to incubate new things that what Eden Protocol is doing. Because it, let's be honest, it's not a joke to start off a new business, um, then to start off a new concept and to do it in the nonprofit space in a nation that is really not doing that well. Um, it's about 19 rands for $1. It's more than that. Um, and so with Bitcoin, we've hit the all-time high for South African land like last week already. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's not the same in the States because it's it that's just how far back our, our currency has dropped. And yeah. so it's, it's cool for us over here, but and then it shows you that the economies are slowly um, disconnecting. But my my folk of my or my point is is that we as Eden Protocol had to find a sustainable um, solution for um, the most basic needs of the community first before we can start building the other layers. So in a social economic structure, there are four layers um, on, on a basic um, level. So it's um, first, it's, it's fight or flight mode, survival mode. Um, and so we need to cater for those needs first. Then it is the individuals 
um, needs. Um, so fight or flight mode comes down to nutrition, which is food, um, water, sanitation, heat, or protection. So safe space. So it's it's the basic needs of for a human being to survive. The second part is the human needs to feel safe um, on an emotional level. Um, need to be not depressed. Need to be uh, willing to go ahead. Um, you know, get a job, um, get a house, get a car, that type of thing. Thereafter, on the third level, because the human is satisfied, they feel that they can take on the responsibility for family, for friendships, for community, all of that. And only when that is done, on the fourth level, is the higher purpose um, structure. Higher purpose is the spiritual stuff. It is the making a difference in the community. It is changing um, the aspects of life for a, a brighter future for the generations to come. And so sometimes we get confused. We want to marry the highest level with the lowest level in the way that we do church business and all of that. And I'm not bashing church. I'm saying that because we've got a, a misguided conception of how just humans are wired. And so with a lot of funders, um, that we work with, they say their mandate is education. Then I say, okay, let's ex extrapolate that and let's look at the fundamentals of what makes up education. Because you, for as a metric, you need to look at education. How do we retain the education? How are the students growing? And how does that influence their future capacity in terms of um, skills development, getting a job, maybe going to university um, and impacting the economy? Because then it benefits the business that invests. What I then say is, is, okay, if that is what you want, we need to get their bodies and brains capable and able to retain all of that information. That requires quality nutrition, not just um, what we would call millipop, which is just a corn-based porridge. Uh, it's carbs. There's no nutrients, no protein in there, basically. So it makes them full. It gives them energy, but their bodies and brains don't develop, and they are lethargic when it comes to retaining uh, any information. And so we need nutrition that provides protein, vitamins, minerals, all of that with the required um, carbs. And now here's the kicker. It needs to be um, either lactose-free or any form of, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, it slipped my mind now. Um, Allergen? When you, sorry? Allergen? Yeah. It needs to be allergen-free. Otherwise, we run into the same problems than what other food um, uh, rescue attempts have been with. They've almost wiped out nations um, because they introduce an allergen into a community that have got absolutely no um, ability to handle that. And so it looks like we've got good solutions, but it's not. And so it is really connecting with that community when you start introducing an investment or a solution and really getting feedback, seeing if, if, if it's dialed in. So now we've got nutrition down. Now we need clean water. Water kills more people than all the diseases like malaria, um, pox, and war combined. So bad water with all of that what that's in water kill more people um, specifically on, on, um, on the poverty line. And so water needs to be sorted out. That's the second one. And if you eat and you drink water, you need sanitation sorted out. Otherwise, you've got water problems again and other um, diseases that get born. And so those are the three fundamentals just to back up education. And so when we start talking to people about the mandate of education, we tell them we actually need to look at what is the infrastructure of the community you want to back. And so don't just come and demand education. Um, get stuck in. And so long story to say that um, we then got stuck into in south africa water is kind of still sorted out um uh, uh, sewage is not a massive problem it's it's not perfect all of those two can can get sorted out and more, made more effective but the nutritional side is a big problem and so we started looking for a solution and that led us to come across uh, already designed uh, food source that is probably one of the best food sources in the world and i'm not trying to um, blow this out of proportion and it's for a really really affordable price which means you can scale it up and it becomes an incredible tool not only for our local communities but if you've got a refugee camp of a hundred thousand people 
the administrative issues there by providing every person with one meal a day is massive. Then you haven't even sorted out water or sewage. So providing people with a long shelf life quality product that provides them with everything they um, can have, then they can eat the, the corn-based porridge for the rest of the day and be fine because the brains and bodies develop because they've got what they need. And so this is what we are chasing hard at the moment because this thing is, is a freshly born baby, but it needs to be grown into something that becomes available for the rest of the world. And so this is Eden Protocol's first real large scale project that becomes a sustainable solution and that helps us keep going so that we can then focus on all the educational, sport, um, cultural, uh, sustainable housing, all of those things um, we can then look at because we've got this, this down. Um, and it becomes a business model that allows us to step away and not continuously ask people for more donations um, because that is a, that's a very um, fine line you're walking because if a business fails, your economic model fails because you were basically completely dependent on them. And so when we identify problems in the communities, we try to find sustainable solutions and then build sustainable businesses around that that then feed back into the community, which creates jobs, which creates opportunities for them in other areas. And so it becomes a circular economy based on everything that we're building. And so we are driving that really hard at the moment. Um, and that means we need to raise funding to put up um, the plant um, that will do this because we can um, outsource it, but then it almost um, quadruples the price of the porridge. And you have to wait in line um, six to double that time in weeks um, just to um, get the, the porridge packaged. And then you need to ship it. And so it changes so many hands and everybody needs to take their cut because it's the only way you sustain a business. But if we can start doing that ourselves, we really take ownership of it and we keep the cost as low as possible. Um, and we keep the quality as high as possible because it is a really short distance between the manufacturing facility and the packaging facility. Um, and that's important for the longevity of it and getting it um, to the to the kids specifically, but you can apply it to adults as well. You just double the portion size. And so it's such a versatile tool. And we really, um, we, we're blessed to come across it. And so we really want to land this thing. We, all, we It's called MANA uh, for the pure and simple fact that we call it the transitional um, uh, food source because it mm. needs to take you from point A to point B, it's not supposed your source of supply. It's to get you out of survival mode into a place where you enter the promised land. And that's what the man is for. It's to get you through the desert time in your life um, in, in a sustainable fashion. And so um, it's not super fancy, but it's incredible stuff. So now we, we're raising funding. Um, and so we're running around in on social media doing what joshua is referring to so a long story once again <laughs> so let's get behind behind the story and let's let's get to the fun stuff now so um those that are familiar with the triathlete world will know iron man um it's an international um, triathlon competition and so uh muscle bay um started the um, iron man 70.3 um event so that's an half iron man um so for those that understand the, the metric system, um, there will be only two nations that don't understand the metric system in the world. So um, you, you swim <laughs> 1.9 Ks, you run, uh, no, you first you bike um, 90 kilometers and then you run another half marathon, 21 Ks um, back to back. And so that that's uh, by no means a, a joke at all. I don't know the guys who do full Ironmans um you are your own um species to 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 be able to do that but because um we were such an integral part of landing the first event making it functionally possible because my two teammates and we will talk about teammates now in a minute so um emil and Anne, they run a big part of the um the events um catering and so 
we got really stuck in and connected with the Iron Man team. And we learned that they've got an Iron Man for the Kids Foundation. Um, and in every location where they have an event, they identify nonprofits that become their beneficiaries. So they raise funding and then they want to make a difference where the race is by putting back into the community. But the mandate specifically says in the municipal district where the race is and for kids specifically. And so it narrows it down, but, but that's perfect because that is it's for the community, by the community, and focusing on the next generation of leaders is a perfect um, starting point. And so um, this is now the third year that's going to take place. No, 17 November is the race event. And so we got a friendly invitation telling us that we will participate. Um, uh, it, was, it was by no means an opportunity for us to say no. Um, but uh, it, it's it's a fun thing. Um, it's going to be the first year that a beneficiary participates from what I understand. So it's a little bit of our um, historic event. And so we just said, okay, let's do this justice. Let's train as if we are going to participate as individuals doing the swimming, biking, and running all as a person. Um, but we are entering as a relay team. So Anne will be on the swim, I will be on the bike, and Emil will be on the run. Um, and it's the only way this will make sense in terms of the day because they're still doing the catering and all of that. I don't know how we're going to make this happen. <laughs> but on a functional side, for community, um, this is the only way it makes sense because um, if I do it by myself, the, it, the equation just doesn't make sense. It is for the community, by the community. And so it's this team effort of training together, of um, going for massages together, you know, going to the, the therapists and the specialists and all of that. And so it's this journey and you see the different responses from three different people and it's just vastly different. Um, and it's so much fun and it's it, it becomes this contagious momentum um, and it draws in more people and so we've got two more people who said they are signing up they are racing the full um race as individuals for eden protocol and they will raise funds and and so this thing is just snowballing and so on social media we record our swimming our running our, our biking all of that and we we tell the story from the perspective of um what an athlete goes through the hours you have to put in the time you have to get up um budgets you know all of those things um and then we use the opportunity to then connect the businesses in the community because ironman is a massive um economic injection for the community uh but we want to help that just escalate more and we want to help um draw the community in to really participate because it's really fresh all it's only the third year now that we're going to do it um, and so we started an ice bucket challenge where we go in front of a business. So we give them all the exposure they, they, <laughs> they possibly can get. Um, and then they deluge us with ice water. But the fun thing is one of the business or companies needs to have a representative that sit with us. So, so they've got skin in the game. Then they make a donation and then they nominate the next business um, and this thing is just taken off. It's like um, really this, it's on fire. We've done or two already in like the span of, I don't know if it's even been a week. I think it's been like three days. Um, and we've got another two lined up already and this thing is just going. And people are coming up with really innovative ideas and creative ways to, <laughs> to chuck us with ice water. Um, so this is, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the community is really getting involved. Um, and it's really for the sake of the kids. And you can see people banding up saying like, man, let's do this. So I don't know, Joshua, does that answer your question partially or is there more, <laughs> more no. details? <laughs> no, it does. I, uh, the Iron Man stuff was what I was, I, I wanted you to share like your heart behind why you're doing it and like, the point of it because otherwise it just sounds like torture like hey we're gonna train and run an iron man but there's like a very good reason for it and community engagement and involvement 
um, is a huge part of the Eden Protocol vision. And I think that the Ironman opportunity uh, demonstrates that like almost better than anything we've done before. Yeah, I, I really believe that. Um, and and this, this is the great thing for me, the excellence with um, which Ironman is done and the athletes that it, that it draws really lifts the standard just um, on every level because the way we need to do the media now, the way we are training, because it's the elite guys that operate. Even on a, if you take rookies that participate, it's maybe first time, um, triathlon um, participants, they do their homework. It's it's really engaged. Um, it's the CEO type of mindset that does this. Um, and so it lifts the standard on every level. And that makes it so fun because the people have a lot of energy as well. And people are positive and they encourage one another. And, you know, you cry every once and again um, because of the stitch. Um, but uh, it is... It's good fun. It's good people. Um, and so we love it for for that reason. Otherwise, I won't do it. I won't get up at four um, to go train at five for the sake of what? No, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm doing it for the community. The, you know, the camaraderie. The, that's what makes it fun. Um, that's what makes it worthwhile. I love that. And I love that. It's really cool to watch on social media. So Josh and I are still in the U S we go over there often enough, but to be able to see you guys training is very cool. And to see how the community is getting involved. So whether it is, um, people who want to run with you, um, yeah. while you're training, or if it is people from the mayoral office deciding to do it too, and friendly yeah. competition, or if it is the businesses getting involved or people just recognizing what you're doing. Like there's a lot of buzz around this and it's really cool to see a community really getting involved around one thing that could be very competitive, but it's community. Like this is yeah. building community. And that, like you said, Josh, like that is such a big part of who we are. Um, and yeah, it's just demonstrating that very well. Yeah, we're loving it. It's only, what is it? We're in March now. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's maybe uh, 37 weeks left. And so on a triathlon, you have to train each discipline uh, mostly once a week. That That's what you're aiming for. So it means three times a week, you've, you've got something that you train. So you think it's it's far away until November. It's like, it's mm -hmm. just a minute thing we did. And so we need to, we can't miss kind of a week. Um, and so you need to keep going. Yeah. So we definitely need the, um, the kudos and the, um, the cheering and all of that. <laughs> to keep us going because you start asking the questions, why are we doing this again? And it was a hard <laughs> question that came our way. Um, uh, I think it was last week. Um, and the answer was just very clear. It's because of the relationships, because I can tell you nonprofit work, um, can be really stinky sometimes. Um, and we, we run a couple of other projects on the side as well. We've, we've got, um, kids coding now. So we've got somebody that has gotten on board. We got three computers sponsored. And so the kids are learning to code in a really, um, rural community. So go check out power town on our social media. Um, then we've got uh, a planter garden, um, going, we, we want to grow a hundred square meters, um, of planter boxes, by the end, end of the year, we're partnering with a, another um, business to do that. And so it takes a lot of effort and you need to get the guys to buy in because growing vegetables means watering twice a day, um, caring for it, tending, you know, um, weeding, all of that, um, and making sure otherwise they just um, die. Um, and we don't want that. We want them to take responsibility to the point where if – that becomes a viable business opportunity so that we can get entrepreneurial um, skill sets grown um, and all of that in there. But it's something they've never done before. And why should they do it? You know, why should they buy into something? And so it's really about changing a mindset, a culture. Um, and so it takes grinding. Those who have kids, you need to sometimes you just be this parent that screams the whole time to get it, you know, into their minds. Um, and so you need to be firm, consistent all the time, you know, 
nagging. <laughs> but it's because they're not used to that standard. Um, and so we had a, we had a little bit of that in the last couple of weeks. Um, and it was Anne, Emil, and myself because they are all very involved, hands-on. Um, and we just realized, man, we need to look at this again. Why are we doing this? We're doing this for relationships' sake. We're going to fail. Let's keep going. Pick up. Let's go. Um, let's go train. Let's Because otherwise you, you, you lose scope of why you're doing this. You get so involved in the momentum of training and it's the Ironman and all of that. But what is the real purpose? Um, and that's something we need to get reminded of um, just every once in a while. Um, but yeah, my, my whole point is the cheering helps. Um, <laughs> when you're means- talking about like the cheering helps what like what are ways that people um could get involved with it like i know some of our listeners are are in south africa some of our listeners are in many other countries um so like if they're if they happen to be local in the country what's something they can do to plug in and if they happen to be international like what's the what is your like what's a way for them? Is it just the social media and following or, you know, what's your thought with that? Well, the easiest way that I want to say that the cheapest way, most accessible way for everybody is you would um, be surprised how, how powerful social media is. So um, by just liking our page, liking our content, sharing it, it, um, it puts us in a position where we reach a wider audience and have the capacity to make a greater impact because spreading the word allows us to reach people who have budgets and funding for what we are doing, who have the same mandate, the same vision, and they were looking for somebody to partner with. And so spreading the word networking, because it's the relational side, um, this makes an incredible, incredible um, difference to what we are doing. So, Wherever you are, um, if you can support us in that way, man, um, it changes our lives. Um, then, if you are in South Africa, um, we've got uh, we've got this more local. I told them earlier. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you love socks, but um, <laughs> so we took the sock. Um, our name is on the back, so when you run, you will see the socks on our social media. Go check it out. Um, you will see Emil's beautiful um, calves and ankles, uh, and, um, <laughs> even Anne. Luckily for me, I'm holding the camera, so my ankles and <laughs> calves are mostly not in any video. Um, but it's it's a beautiful, this is what Muscle Bay looks like. Uh, we went swimming this morning at 7. The water was so warm. Man, it was a beautiful morning. Uh, but we jokingly say we've got a whale on our sock. So when you wear the sock, your shoe ends there. So there's always a little whale tail sticking <laughs> out. So uh, there's always something to tell uh, when you go around. We've got a whale of a time over here, so come join us. Um, but that's something we sell the socks um, to raise funds, but also to promote the area and to promote the vibe and it's something tangible people can get into. Um, and so you can see on our, you will see on our social media, there's a link there where you can um, get your hands on socks. We, we ship them all around South Africa. And so that's why I'm saying um, stateside, but donations, we, we take donations from around the world. If you go to our website, there's a donation link um, and funding makes a difference to be quite honest. We need to put up a whole packaging plant and we are working on that. But um you need to show your worth and you need to find an investor that, that um, buys into that. Um, and we've, I'm an entrepreneur um, business person myself. You do like 30 proposals uh, um, in SA. Our economy is not great. And so you need to do uh, a lot of proposals with bulletproof ideas, bulletproof economic models, uh, and then something that is like 90% safe. And I don't know, starting up a business, having something that that's safe, um, there's really opportunities like that. And so that that is what people want to invest in because they want to protect the capital. And so uh, providing us with, we, we always say um, a cappuccino a month um, provides the nutrition. Um, if you take the porridge, 
I think, how many kids? Is it 20 kids you feed with a cappuccino? Is it more 30? I can't remember the math now. Um, um, but if you just take normal nutrition with the aftercare center that we sponsor, it's it's small kids um, that get nutrition and um, school care to help them with their homework. Uh, it is, I think it's it's a it's a cappuccino for three days food for them. Um, so you, it makes a difference. And so going without a cappuccino or one cappuccino less a month, uh, won't break your, your bank or your health. Um, it might do you good. Um, <laughs> but it makes, it makes a massive difference. Um, specifically because our exchange rate is beneficial to anybody that's not this side. Um, but yeah, so that is what we do. And then commenting um on our uh, social media it's fun it's it's nice to get a conversation going we we're really relational people um and if you are in the muscle bay area man challenge us for a uh, um, ice bucket challenge get involved come cheer us on race day you can come from international you can come from sri lanka the states wherever come on race day come visit muscle bay it's a beautiful holiday destination it's really you've got the big five year you've got everything like Ask Joshua and Kim. Um, the food is good, the wine is cheap, and it's great wine. Um, That's true. Uh, I don't want to brag, um, but <laughs> <laughs> come eat your wagyu burger. Um, you know, so it is. It's a. It's an incredible opportunity for anybody that want to get involved and yeah, challenge us with uh, creative ideas. You know, maybe you come up with something that is cool, um, and maybe it's feasible. And so let's get going. We want to get the community involved. If you go read up on our website, this is my last point before I uh, hand over the mic again. Uh, we've got an um, racing Ironman tab on our website. And so what we've said is um, you send it and we will wear it. And so I've made this statement. If you send me um, leopard skin, leotards and pink running shoes and whatever, we will run with that stuff. Um, because that is the fun part of it. Um, and if you send us stuff, um, uh, that doesn't fit us, then we, uh, we've got community, uh, up and coming community running groups, cycling groups, swimming groups, all of that. Go check out the surfer kids. It's a nonprofit we partner with. It's kids from the township that overcome the stigma, um, of the ocean swimming and who is your, um, your pro surfers. These kids are doing incredibly well. And so it it, it crosses all the borders. Um, and so get involved by physical stuff as well. It makes a difference. And if you want to know what size we are, we've got a whole size chart up on our <laughs> website on Racing Iron Man. You can see the size of my forehead or the size of the palm <laughs> of my hand. <laughs> if you really want to know, we put everything up there. Um, we're really transparent. Um <laughs> But yeah, so get involved, make it fun. Uh, we're really about, this is the word Eden means pleasure. So let's start having some fun while we change the nation. I love it. That's awesome. So um, to get these socks in South Africa, you said on social media, there are instructions. Is that also on the website? Yeah, I can probably send you guys the link. Um, it's on the great. website as well. Order your I socks, know. you can click on the link there. Great. I'm looking uh, at Joshua's it on the website. On yeah. We'll yeah. put it in the it's show notes. So if anybody wants to participate in that or to check you guys out on uh, social media, all the links will be there. And you know what, Josh? I think we need to add some socks to the U.S. merch too. I think And we then might. just send all of the proceeds over and uh, awesome. you can get some cool socks and feed some kids. Yeah. I yeah, that, that would be, be that awesome. would be really great. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Listen, the socks have been flying. Um, I think we ordered 100 pairs. We've got 80 pairs gone. It's wow. like, yeah, no, it is flying. Um, it's nice. quality socks as well. Um, I don't know what brand you have there. This is a, um, a sports racing brand. So it's a really cool sock. Um, we really love them. Uh, this is the only socks I wear now, even to church and weddings. Um <laughs> <laughs> you're walking billboard you know oh i love it <laughs> yeah 
No, I think that's amazing. And I think the opportunity for people to get plugged in, like even if you just go follow the social media and enjoy the training content and the content with um, like, I mean, I would say at the moment, like it's primarily like your Ironman stuff is, is the focus, but also like you get you talked about like the care center and the planters, like those posts just went up recently. And so you get to see all the things that Francois is involved in that Kim and I are involved in from a distance, uh, at least most of the year. Um, (laughs) and, uh, just kind of their heart for the community and what's going on. If nothing else, a like and a follow is, a is a great way to get connected with that. Yeah, and we are on every possible platform that is social and that carries media. So <laughs> you will be able to find us. <laughs> yes, we're going to put some of the links in the show notes uh, for the for the website, for the socks, for the Facebook and Instagram. We'll put those up there so that you guys can, can get connected. Awesome. Yeah, appreciate that. Cool. Well, Francois, thank you for being on today. We really are excited about what's happening there. Um, The community is growing. The community is starting to thrive and really see the value of what what could be. And I love that. And uh, it's also fun to see you guys train while I'm sitting on my couch. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, people people are... uh... Um, uh, they're giving us the Fitbits and uh, 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 smartwatches to go run with, so that they make the, you know, um, the they miles. Get their daily so they goals. Can, That's so. You funny. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today, um, listeners. Go hit a like and subscribe button for Eden Protocol. It's that simple, um, and uh, maybe catch the wave of what's happening over in Mossel Bay, South Africa. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. Keep up with us along this journey by liking, subscribing, and becoming a member through YouTube. Members get exclusive access to bonus content with our guests, deeper dives into topics, and a look into other projects. We're glad to have you here. See you next time.